Yeah, g'day. As you all know, I'm always showing you how to turn the freshest produce into exotic taste sensations that delight the eye and thrill the palate. But I also know that most of you, like me, love the sustaining sugars and full flavoured fat of fast food. So tonight, I'm going to show you how to prepare a complete meal that will impress even the fussiest fast foodie. Now, so much in food is in the presentation. And for that, you don't have to be the best cook, but you do have to be good at building stuff. And that means using the right tools. Pastry cutters, melon ballers, and even a simple sauce bottle. Now, for the fast food, you want something that's going to be simple to work with, obviously delicious, but more importantly uses a variety of ingredients. And that's why I've chosen this KFC two-piece feed. Chicken, coleslaw, potato, gravy. And if you think that looks tops now, you just wait until we're finished with it. Let's get to it. Now firstly, make sure that your two-piece feed is well rested. Then, pour the gravy from the mashed potato into the sauce bottle and set that aside for later. Next, take the pastry cutter and place it in the centre of the plate. Then carefully fill that with the mashed potato. Look at that. Perfect. Now, take the chicken and remove the skin, being sure to keep the skin in one piece. Then simply bone the chicken and arrange it on top of the mash, trying to get as much height into the presentation as possible. Then. Using the skin that you've set aside, slice it into attractive shapes. And then, veil the top of the chicken with the crispy skin. Next, use your melon baller to place three domes of coleslaw around the potato and chicken. Now for the sauce. Take the remaining slaw and place it in the food processor. Just add a splash of water and a pinch of salt and give it a quick whiz. Push that through a sieve and you've got an elegant coleslaw coolie. So, just pour that carefully around the potato and then finish the whole dish with a ribbon of gravy from your sauce bottle. And there you have it. A tower of 11 spiced chicken on a bed of potato puree with a chiffonade of crispy skin and a simple coleslaw coolie. The KFC two-piece feed, complete with all the fats and sugars you love, but with the presentation your foodie friends prefer. Enjoy. Oh, g'day. There's nothing like owning a house on the beach with expansive water views, but with property prices skyrocketing, most Australians can only dream. On the other hand, this house is only three streets back from the beach, so it's worth less than a quarter of the price of the other place on the beach with a view. The ocean's there, it's just the view's blocked. Well luckily, Todd's come up with the perfect solution. This is a periscope. So what we're gonna do is use this technology to give ourselves a view of the ocean from the height of the roof. Have a look at that view. So what we're gonna do is mount a periscope up here that'll reflect this view down to our window. And that's all there is to it. Amazing. That view is absolutely beautiful. So don't give up the dream. If you can't afford a million dollar view, periscope your practically priced property and enjoy the view Todd's way. Yeah. Oh, g'day. Like most women, my lady friend likes to be cuddled all night long. And like a good man, I like to provide. The only problem is, the spooning position makes no accommodation for your arm being laid on. It just lies there being crushed and starved of blood every night. And after a night of cuddling, you can kiss the use of your arm goodbye. Well, Todd's going to show you a way that you can spoon your lady friend for as long as she wants and still be able to use both arms in the morning. This is a typical foam mattress. If you use a spring mattress, ditch it and get one of these. They're much easier to cut. Now, figure out your normal sleeping position. Then, simply trace around the arm like this. Now all you need is a sharp blade and cut away. Perfect. Now let's test it out. I 
can't feel a thing. So now you can spoon your lady friend all night long and then be able to get up and build her a house. Yeah, g'day. It's an all too familiar and tragic scene in Australian backyards. And even though it's law to have a fence around your pool, statistically a kitty still drowns in an Australian pool every day. Gates can get left open, fences can get climbed, and supervising uncles can fall asleep. But if you take a tip from Todd, then you can avoid further family fatalities at your place. If you've got a grass area like this one, either around your pool or even around your pool fence, what you can do to deter the little ones getting in is to create a protective grassy moat. And the way to do that is with bindi eyes, or as Jamie Drury would say, saliva pterosperma, the common Australian bindi eye. We're all familiar with the distinctive pinch from a cluster of these guys when walking barefoot over a public park or oval. <sighs> That's nasty. Now once these little buggers get into an area, they take over in no time and they're virtually maintenance free. So pick some up from your local oval and simply transplant them to your lawn. Now, let's see if it works. So long as you keep the thongs locked in a safe place, you can decide when the kids go in the pool. There you go, kids. Bindi Eye Pool Protection. It's a little bit of extra effort for that added peace of mind. Oh, good day, And welcome to a very special Todd's Tips. I want you to meet a very special and very brave friend of mine. This is Heather. Recently, Heather lost her leg to an infection and it's left her in this wheelchair. Now, before this tragedy, there was nothing she enjoyed more than spending time pottering around in her garden. But now, because of this cumbersome contraption, her garden is going to need some minor alterations so that Heather can still enjoy it. And that's what life support is all about. Let's get to work. Hi, Heather. My name's Sigourney. Hi. Oh, I love your skirt. Thanks. It's lovely. tranquil and traditional Japanese pebble garden. Thanks, Dad. Thanks, life support. Now, the thing with the Japanese pebble garden is that they constantly need to be raked to form different designs. So, a quick spin in your chair oh. and the wheels <laughs> will weave yeah. the patterns for you. Okay. Well, don't be polite. Get in there and give it a go. So, take a tip from Todd. If you've lost a leg to gangrene, well, that doesn't mean you can't enjoy having a green thumb. Simply take a plant from Japan and pebble your patch. And use some Zen culture to enjoy your horticulture. They milk the system. They love being the centre of attention. Look at me, I'm disabled. You know? They get a disabled pension. They get, you know, parking right out the front of the shopping centre. Why can't we park right out the front? Why do they have to get the parking right out the front? Here in Australia, with the government, they've got pension, they get all the privileges, they get more discounts than me, and I'm a student, you know what I mean? With that disabled pension, I mean, you could fucking, you could fucking use that to, I mean, anyone's fucking advantage, right? Do I go out and say, give me this because I can't support myself? It's bullshit. <laughs> yeah, good eye. Have you ever noticed when you're out enjoying a quiet ale that you can feel trouble brewing? And sometimes it's not even your fault. If you're like me, you might even attract it for no reason whatsoever. I'll take it easy, mate. Anyway, sometimes when a simple situation turns nasty, you can feel that flying fists of fury are only seconds away. Even if, like me, you have the physical attributes to fight back, you might not want to for moral or personal reasons. I mean, my hands are my tools of trade, and I'd never risk them to settle a drunken score. But no one likes being called a coward just for backing down. Well, tonight, I'm going to show you how to triple your chances of walking away from an altercation unscathed. In nature, 
Animals use tricks and subterfuge to ward off predators. See how this little guy has fake eyes on his wings, so his predators are fooled into attacking him in the wrong place? I've used this same principle of nature to build a barroom brawl vest. Let's see how it works. Simply pull on these tabs like this, and kapow! Your enemy will be confused and not know what to hit. And that's all there is to it. Everyone is happy. He got to let off some steam and I keep my looks and my pride. So, if barroom brawls are brewing, take a tip from Todd and walk away with your heads held high. Yeah, good eh? When you're in pursuit of a lady friend, ever notice how they tend to judge a man? Not on the size of his heart or other organs, but on the size of his wallet. This leaves hard-working, modest earners like me with no hope of ever enjoying the company of these superficial, yet somewhat attractive and alluring women. But luckily, I've found a simple and effective way to assist the financially challenged amongst us to access these alluring ladies lusting for your manly companionship. Firstly, head straight down to the finance sector of your nearest CBD. Locate an ATM which rich business types use and after a particularly busy period like lunchtime, simply shuffle through the discarded receipts. Now what you're looking for is a receipt from an account with a large bank balance. Simply place the receipt into your wallet and head back to your upmarket bar. The next time it's your shout, make sure you're in good sight of the lady friend you're after. As you pay for the drinks, the receipt should accidentally fall out. She won't be able to resist a glance at the balance. It's an instinct acquired at birth by this particular breed of woman. And given every woman's hidden desire for the working man, it'll be hard to hold her back. And there you have it. Another top tip to help you get your share of lady friends by appearing to be the perfect combination of brawn and bucks. Yeah, good eh? Hi, how are you? Yeah, I'm really good in your seat. Oh, yeah, good eh? I find boxer shorts are certainly more comfortable than briefs. There is one problem, however, and every guy knows what I'm talking about. Sometimes boxers just seem to want to ride right up your backside. You know the situation, guys. No matter how often you pull them south, they'll soon make their way north again. Some boxers just don't want to stay down. Well, luckily, there's something you can do to remedy the situation. You see, while your boxers always want to ride up, your socks will always want to slide down. The solution? Using some braces, simply adjust them to the minimum length and attach the bottom of your boxes to the top of your socks. And there you go. Your socks will keep your boxes from riding up and your boxes will stop your socks from sliding down. Now, you can feel confident to do whatever you need to do, knowing you're not gonna give yourself a mega wedgie. Oh, good day. No one should be scared of going to the doctor, but occasionally things can go a little skew if downstairs and you can get a little worried. Now, I've got no problem with people looking at me as God intended, but I'm not sure if I want a stranger actually touching my tender toolkit. Sometimes though, you need medical attention and there has to be another way. Well, thank Todd there is. This is Jerome. Jerome is an exotic dancer. He loves getting his gear off for a price and does so at the drop of a hat. So all I'm going to do is paint the relevant information the doctors need onto Jerome's tackle to help the medical fraternity tackle my problem. Now, it's important to get the colours of your condition just right so when the doctor examines your stand-in, he'll give an accurate diagnosis. Now, I just sit back and wait for my private dancer to come home with the goods. See you, mate. Oh. It's okay. Nothing serious. Just apply twice daily to affected area. Yeah, cool. So there you have it. If getting fondled by a fella freaks you out, take a tip from Todd and paint a paid professional for a hands-free prescription. Todd, mate, scored another ladder from the site today. Where can I put it? I'll put it in the kitchen next to the wheelbarrow. 
No more room, mate. Yeah, right. Oh, good day. If you're a single bloke living with a mate, it doesn't take long for your place to fill up with all sorts of junk. Sometimes the simplest solution is to upgrade to a nicer place with more room in a better suburb. But a couple of single blokes with single blokes habits and all the tools that come with us might make a landlord think twice about letting us loose in his valuable property. But tonight, I'm going to show you how to pass your tenant's application with flying colours and to give the landlord the peace of mind that you'll keep his investment property in tip-top shape. That's right, all you have to do is pretend to be a gay couple. Thanks to TV shows like The Block and Queer Eye for the Straight Guy, gay men are universally known for their anal tidiness and careful interior design sensibilities. So all you and your mate have to do is dress as though you're male models, stand close together and talk about your vision for the room. Hey, where do you reckon we should put our statue of David? The landlord will quickly jump to the conclusion that you're both gay, without either of you having to perform any homosexual acts. Enjoy, gentlemen. Then, once you've got the keys to your new pad, it's time to relax and move in your belongings. So now, you've got all the space in the world to put all your tools and stuff. And when the landlord catches on that you're not gay, well, he can't really complain because that's discrimination. So, take a tip from Todd. You and your mates can trade up to a better tenancy by pretending to be gay. Ciao. Oh, good day. You know, when it comes to bedding women, We've all heard of some blokes who subscribe to a simple theory. If you just go up to a woman and ask her straight out to sleep with you, you might get rejected 99 times out of 100, but you will get lucky eventually. The thing that stops most blokes from trying this simple approach is a terrible fear of rejection and public humiliation. So that's why I've devised some simple rejection insurance. Let me show you. Hey. You know, I really think that you and I should just go somewhere quiet and do what comes naturally. What? Oh, sorry, did you think I was talking to you? I, I was talking to my girlfriend. No, little lady, that was just somebody in the bar. <laughs> Look, I'm sorry, I, I didn't realise... Don't even yeah. worry about it. Anyway, love, gotta go. Bye. See that? No harm done. You escape with your dignity intact and you can keep going until you get the right response. How about you and I just cut to the chase, get naked and get busy? Yeah, right.